While leaving her house, Sandy takes her sunglasses out of her bag and accidentally breaks them. Now she needs to buy new ones. Sandy calls a taxi and arrives at the street with fashionable boutiques. The best glasses in the city, the sign on the first building claims. The best glasses in the world is written on the second boutique. The inscription on the third store is the coolest. Sandy heads there. What is written on the third store? The best glasses in this street. Mike wakes up in the back seat of a racing car. The engine is roaring, the wind is blowing in Mike's face. There's no one at the wheel, and a cliff is straight ahead. Michael's hands are tied. He jumps out of the car without hesitation and lands on the asphalt. Surprisingly, he doesn't get a single scratch. How is this possible? The car isn't moving, just its engine is running. Once, on a cold winter night, someone stole jewelry from a famous singer's house. The thief didn't manage to run far away because a police car was passing by. The burglar hid the bag with the jewelry in the snow and disappeared into the crowd. Detective Anderson managed to catch two suspects. Look at them and try to guess who robbed the singer. If you dig snow with your bare hands, they will turn red. This man has red fingers and palms. But that woman could dig snow wearing a pair of gloves, so she could be the thief too. But she wouldn't be able to run in such high heels. It's snowing. Richard is trying to walk fast, not to freeze. He's leading three sheep through a dense forest. Finally, they reach the river. There is a raft near the shore, but it can only transport one sheep and one person at a time. A wolf is sitting on the other side of the river. If Richard takes his sheep there one by one, the wolf will grab them. The man needs to be near his sheep at all times. But how can he do it? It's winter, and the river is frozen. Leo's boss yelled at the guy because he hadn't completed his weekly work plan. Now, Leo has to spend his entire weekend in the office, finishing his work. The boss took Leo's magnetic card so that he couldn't leave the building. Several hours had passed. Leo feels hungry. There's no water or food in the office, but there's a fridge and cooler in the next room, behind the door with a magnetic lock. On Monday, Leo gives his boss the completed report. Somehow, the guy managed to get food and water. How did he do it? Leo just went to the refrigerator and got himself some food. No one said the door with the magnetic lock had been locked. Victoria approaches her house. The light bulb turns on automatically and lights her way to the door. Victoria inserts the key and goes inside. A couple of hours later, the doorbell rings. She looks through the peephole and sees a silhouette of a man wearing a hat. Victoria is afraid to open the door, but not because it's a stranger but because it's not a human. Why does she think that? The light sensor didn't work, so there's no physical body outside. A university professor enters a lecture hall, where his colleague, an elderly teacher, is giving a lecture on quantum physics. He's drawing formulas on the board, and his students are using their laptops to take notes. The professor knows that one of these students is sleeping. He starts walking around the room, stopping behind each of them in turn. Who's dreaming right now? Almost all the students are writing the formulas down on their laptops, except for that one. His screen is off. That's because he's fallen asleep. Johnny is going through his bills. $50 for electricity, $39 for water, $70 for a bag, 
$448 for a new phone, $52 for dinner at a restaurant, $589 for a computer, $637 for a room in an expensive hotel. He has received a $978 bonus at work, but he also needs to buy a new fridge for his mom, and it costs $798. John has to leave soon, but he wants to know how much money he'll need. How can he calculate it quickly? He should use the calculator app on his phone. The simplest answer is often the right one. There's a huge airplane hangar on the edge of the desert. Pilot Tyler steps inside and notices a cat sleeping near the ceiling on one of the beams. Tyler decides to save it. There are no stairs and nothing else that can be used to get there. The only thing Tyler sees is a large puddle of water on the floor. So how did the cat get there? There was a pyramid of ice cubes. The cat climbed to the top of it and reached the ceiling. Then the ice melted and left the puddle. Peter works as a top manager at a huge insurance company. Today, his boss ordered him to fire three employees. Peter doesn't want to get rid of someone just like that, so he comes up with a test. He invites all three candidates for dismissal and asks them to write down why they should stay in the company. The first employee writes that he's helped the company earn $100,000. The second guy reports that he's found 10 new clients, increasing the company's profit by $200,000. Using some illegal schemes, the third employee has earned $300,000 over the past quarter. Who should Peter fire and who should he keep? Actually, he got the order to fire three people, remember? The test was pointless. Joe goes to the gym every day. He lifts heavy weights and works with the biggest barbells. He has achieved great results. One day, a skinny guy comes to the gym. He has never done sports in his life. He approaches the heaviest dumbbells and lifts them easily. Joe can't believe his eyes. He's been working for 10 years to begin lifting such weights. How did the newbie manage it? It seems impossible. The new guy is actually a robot. There's a wire connecting him to a wall outlet over there, see? And at the far end of the hall, a man is holding some gadget. He must be controlling the robot. Margaret, Rachel, and Diana are walking down the street, sharing their plans for the weekend. The girls look rich, but only one of them has a lot of money. Who is it? It's Margaret. You can notice the key to a Ferrari in her bag. The king of one country was holding a feast where he invited all his friends. Guests gathered in the great hall. But before the celebration began, one of the courtiers informed the king that all the drinks were poisoned. The king said nothing and offered everyone to raise a toast to the new millennium. All the guests got up and raised their glasses. That's when the king noticed the villain who had been trying to poison him and other guests. Who is it? The guy over there is holding an empty glass. He knows the drinks are poison, so he hasn't poured anything in his glass. Detective Anderson investigates the case of missing purebred puppies. He has a list of three suspects. He visits each of them. The first suspect is a young girl. She says she spent the previous day with her friends. And she's also allergic to dogs. The second suspect is an elderly man. He says he hasn't left the house for the last few days. The third one is a famous video blogger. She says she was making YouTube videos all day. Which of them is lying? The first girl. She says she's allergic to dogs, but there's a bowl and some dog food in her kitchen. Detective Anderson is chasing a robber dressed in a tuxedo. Suddenly, the criminal runs inside a huge hall. 
all people there are formally dressed. Help Detective Anderson find the suspect among them. Catch that guy. He's sweating because he's been running. A train finally leaves the station. The conductor starts checking the tickets. Two passengers, Mickey and Anya, hand him two tickets for the same seat. There must be something wrong here, because only one passenger can buy a ticket for a particular seat. The first ticket belongs to Mickey Jones. The seat is 7B. Anya Roy is written on the second ticket. The seat is 7B. Who should sit in this place? Plane ticket, Mickey Jones' document says, and this is the train. The place belongs to Anya.